Hello and welcome back! I bet we all couldn't get over the multicolored superheroes since its premiere in 1993. Yes, I am referring to none other than the Power Rangers franchise. While not all the teams of Power Rangers are made equal, every one of us has a personal favorite. Though all Rangers rely on the Morphin Grid to tap into their powers, each has a different way of accessing them. Moreover, each team confronted unique foes, from moderately strong to insanely powerful. That leaves fans with so many Rangers to choose from, but which team would become surprised? How about a little ride into the strengths and weaknesses of each team? Let's get started. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Zeo. The Zeo Rangers comprise individuals who draw their abilities from the Zeo Crystal, engaging in combat against the Machine Empire. According to Zordon, mentor to the Zeo Rangers, they have the power to successfully replace the long-gone original Power Rangers and reach new heights in their fight against evil. Power Rangers Zeo is the fourth season of Power Rangers, based on the Super Sentai series Choriki Sentai O-Ranger. It picks up where the third season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers left off. In this one, the Rangers return to their adult selves and find the Zeo Crystal, which gives them new powers to battle against the Machine Empire. So how does Zeo's journey start? Well, it all starts with discovering fragments of the Zeo Crystal in order to alter Master Vile's time spell. However, to their shock, the Power Rangers find themselves without their power coins and command center. Don't worry guys, Zordon and Alpha 5 have the situation covered. They reveal a new base and use the Zeo Crystal to create new new and more powerful versions of the Rangers, known as Zeonizers. This freshly formed group of Zeonizers has some new members as Aisha Campbell goes to Africa. The role of Yellow Ranger is taken over by Tanya Sloan, while the remaining four, Rocky DeSantos, Tommy Oliver, Catherine Hillard, and Adam Park transition from the Mighty Morphin Rangers. The group has to primarily fight against the Machine Empire and King Mondo, battling numerous difficulties during which they use Super Zeo gems to transform into Super Zeo Zords, an immensely stronger version of themselves. In the end, they finally defeat King Mondo and live peacefully. Overthrowing King Mondo remains one of the Zeo's greatest victories. Time and again, the Zeo Rangers have to take up different forms like the Turbo Rangers to stop Divatox crew's evil plan. They also feature in multiple Power Rangers chronicles like the Dino Rangers or as part of the legendary Rangers army. Tommy can even use the Master Morpher to morph into Zeo Ranger 5 and access four of his forms used while fighting. Interestingly, the Zeo Rangers have their own pocket universe and timeline and it's only through the Morphin grid that they could contact Zordon. So what makes the Zeo Rangers so powerful. The Zeo Crystal is apparently the strongest power source in the Power Rangers universe and offers direct entry to the Morphin Grid. Hence, arguably, the Zeo Zords are said to be the most powerful, surpassing the Dino or the Thunder Zords. This Zeo Crystal gives them enormous strength, agility, durability, and fighting skills. Each of them has unique weapons like Power Sword, Power Shield, or Power Hatchets. They can even form a Zeo Megazord by commanding individual Zeos to combine and use the Zeo Blaster for team attacks. However, prolonged use of the Zeo Crystal can cause power instability and drain energy. Cautious use is the key. Super Mega Force. Power Rangers' success and overwhelming fan response made sure that the franchise never goes out of fashion. Super Mega Force is the 21st season of the show. Yes, you heard that right, the 21st. A sequel to Power Rangers Mega Force and adapted from Tenso Sentai and Gosager and Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiger, this installment is all about protecting the Earth from invading Armada forces. Mentored by Gosei and Tensu, the team consists of seven Rangers. The Armada, under the command of Emperor Mavro presents a bigger threat to the Rangers when they destroy Warstar. Gosei introduces the legendary Ranger Keys and the legendary Morpher, which allow the Rangers to transform into any previous Power Ranger. They encounter former Rangers and get new powers for their legendary Megazord while trying to stop the Armada. Along with them is Orion, the sixth Ranger, an Andresian refugee endowed with Super Ranger skills. They find out that the royal family of the Armada includes the enemy Vrak, 
who is still alive. All of the previous Power Rangers team up to take on Emperor Mavro and the Exborg army in their ultimate conflict. Quite a reunion. In my opinion, this season is a nostalgic throwback where the USP is the legendary Ranger Keys and Morpher allowing them to harness all the previous Rangers' powers. Though in terms of versatility and durability, it might be enormous. In terms of agility, it could have been better. However, the unique weapons of each Ranger, like the Super Mega Saber, Super Mega Blaster, or the Super Mega Cannon, added a fresh spark to the show. This team's ultimate power lies in the creation of legendary Megazord for amplified power. Indeed, this was a good way to honor the legacy of the Power Rangers. Others, three, who would become... Ninja Storm. How about we join a ninja squad now? Power Rangers Ninja Storm, the franchise's 11th installment, adapts the Super Sentai series Ninpu Sentai Hurricaneger. It revolves around a team of ninja students turned rangers defending against Lothar's threats. Interestingly, it marks Disney's debut as a full series producer, exclusively airing on ABC Kids from start to finish. Under the guidance of Sensei Kanoi Watanabe and his son Cam, three Wind Ninja Academy students, Tori Hansen, Shane Clark, and Dustin and Brooks became Wind Power Rangers. They're given wind morphers to change and protect the world when the evil ninja Lothor kidnaps them. Joining the Thunder Rangers, Hunter and Blake, and Cam as the Green Samurai, they employ Zords to fight Lothor and his space hordes. The Rangers eventually defeat Lothor's army and imprison him before taking up new careers as racers and instructors at the Academy. In this ninja world, the Power Rangers are actually extremely strong elementals and have command over elements of wind, earth, lightning, and water. The yellow wind ranger has unmatched speed, while the blue wind ranger can dive deep into the ocean. Red wind ranger can soar high through the skies, but that's not all. The strong navy thunder ranger and the commanding crimson thunder ranger are also on the team. They're exclusive rangers with morphers and can command zords. These ninja rangers are the ultimate example of team spirit and cooperation in the face of trouble. They also have a ninja zord system where the storm ninja zord combine to form the Storm Megazord. Another one, the Thunder Megazord, is formed by combining the Thunder Ranger's Zords with the Serpent Sword and the Ram Hammer. These powerful combinations make the Rangers far more effective and strong in their battles against Lothar and his army. They guard the world from the forces of evil by standing as protectors of the planet and by wielding the powerful Ninja Zord system and their control over the elements. The Power Rangers Ninja Storm constantly reminds us that they are one of the toughest powers Power Rangers squads as they fight through several obstacles and enemies. Wild Force Rangers. Now, let's talk about a team of Power Rangers who proudly call themselves Guardians of the Earth. Each Wild Zord chooses a Ranger to grant its power to, harnessed through an Animal Crystal and a Growl Morpher. The Animal Crystal symbolizes the Wild Zords of Animaria, and the Wild Force Rangers use these powers to fight the Orgs. Took their name quite seriously, huh? After fighting Master Org for thousands of years, the Animarian Warriors are replaced by the Wild Force Rangers. One of the Warriors, Merrick Balaton defeats Master Org using the Dark Wolf Mask, but is cursed and transformed into Zen Aku, the Duke Org. The last members of Animaria remain hidden in the Animarium above in the sky. The Wild Force Rangers part ways after returning the Morphers to Princess Shayla. In the present time, increased pollution has awakened the Orgs. The new Rangers were then recruited by Princess Shayla to defeat the Orgs. The team consisted of Cole Evans, Danny Delgado, Max Cooper, Merrick Balaton, and Alyssa Enwile, each of whom had unique powers. Among them is Merrick Balaton, the Lunar Wolf Ranger. He's the strongest and most experienced of all, being one of the six ancient warriors to fight the Orgs 3,000 years ago and to have defeated Master Org before. The strongest Wild Force weapon is the Wild Force Rider wielded by Cole, the Wild Force Red Ranger. This weapon, given to Cole by the god Animus, allows him to destroy the Zord of Lord Zed, Serpentera. Apart from this, they even wielded the Crystal Sage. Saber, Jungle Sword, and the Wild Force Rider, among others. The tenacity of the Rangers revived their Wild Zords, which led to the final fall of Master Org. Initially, allies of the Animarian Warriors, the Wild Zords now support the Wild Force Rangers. When the Wild Force Rangers were established, these animals had developed giant mechanical bodies and, with the power of the Morphin Grid, gained the ability to combine into a Mega Zord. They parted ways after returning the Morphers to Princess Shayla. The Mega Rangers later seek the help of 
the Wild Force Rangers in defeating the Armada, which marks their return as a part of the legendary Rangers army. The Wild Force Rangers remains an integral part of the Power Rangers franchise and is indeed one of the most powerful squads. They also appeared in the Chronicles of the Power Rangers history compiled by Tommy Oliver. The Jungle Fury Rangers The Jungle Fury Rangers are experts in martial arts and masters in the Pai Zook. Their power comes from their inner selves. Using their animal spirits, they become superhuman fighters. The main five-man team and the Spirit Rangers are collectively known as the Jungle Fury Rangers. Their highly honed and developed animal souls empower their morphers. They all fight together and defeat the ancient dragon known as Daishi and his forces. They go back stronger and achieve Jungle Master Mode by combining the Gorilla, Antelope, and Penguin Spirits with the Tiger, Jaguar, and Cheetah Spirits respectively. In their base forms, RJ, the Violet Wolf Ranger, is the most powerful. He's the team mentor, so RJ can defeat monsters alone with Muay Thai without needing weapons. To aid the Mega Rangers in their final battle against the Armada, when they were facing hundreds of Exborgs and several dozen Bruisers, the Jungle Jungle Fury Rangers joined the legendary Rangers army. The Jungle Fury Rangers were separated into their own pocket world due to Lord Draken's actions, which split the timeline into several pocket universes. Eventually, with the reset of the timeline, the Jungle Fury Rangers were brought back into their old form. The three major Rangers, Lily, Theo, and Casey, can combine their original animal spirits with those of a gorilla or antelope to develop a higher form that gives them more power and capabilities. Tonfa Bow, Wolf Morpher, Savage Spin Sword, and Claw Boosters are some of the weapons they use. White Rhino Ranger Dominic has the Rhino Morpher to control his Rhino Spirit. The Rhino Pride and Jungle Pride Megazords and the aid of Spirit Rangers help them in fights. These unique weaponry and combat skills definitely make the Jungle Fury Rangers a strong Power Rangers team. The Jungle Spirit is indeed tough. The Solar Power Rangers The Solar Power Rangers are warriors who fight evil within the Void. They appeared in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the first time. They are six Prometheus Solar Rangers, namely the Ranger Slayer, the Green Ranger from Ninja Storm, the Dark Ranger from Dino Charge, the Magna Defender from Lost Galaxy, and the Yellow Ranger from Zeo. The current team, however, has eight members in total. The story follows Ranger Slayer Kimberly Hart assembling five Rangers to investigate the destruction of Grace Sterling's Prometheus. Prometheus spacecraft. They come across Ilarion, who controls the ancient Solarix artifact. She gives them Solar Rangers powers. Now more powerful with enhanced abilities and Solar Zords cap capable of changing into the mighty Solar Megazord, the Solar Rangers face Praetor. Praetor had first created these powers when the Void Dimension got separated from the Morphin Grid. The Rangers use their Solarix crystals to journey through time to their respective timelines. The Solarix is the most important weapon for the Solar Rangers and works as a morph. Also known as Solar Crystal or Solarix Glove, this is an ancient device embodying a fragment of the Morphin Grid and is fueled by a crystal. Moreover, when the Zords combine to form Solar Megazords, the Solar Rangers get even more power. Ranger Slayer also employs a futuristic energy bow, whereas Tanya uses nunchucks. Though various Rangers wield swords, each weapon has individual modifications to suit its wielder's style. Their connection to the Morphin Grid and access to Solarix and Solar Megazords make them a frightening force against enemies. They're considered to be one of the most powerful teams in the Power Rangers universe, capable of knocking down even the toughest foes. Mystic Rangers To stop the Morlocks from invading Briarwood, Udana chooses a team of teenage fighters called the Mystic Rangers. Even when they don't have their powers, the Sorcerer Rangers can perform magic. The yellow, pink, green, and blue Mystic Force Rangers, Chief, Vida, Xander, and Madison, respectively, are the most powerful magicians. Their greatest spell of all is the ability to morph into the Mystic Titans. They are led by the incredibly powerful Red Mystic Force Ranger, Nick, also known as the Light, who is the son of Udana and Lianbo. The Mystic Force Rangers have the ability to go legend mode and match the power of the ancient mystics. They use all their magical energy to defeat Optimus, the supreme master of the underworld. Mythical creatures known as the ancient titans are the source of the strength used by the Mystic Rangers. These entities are made up of elemental forces. They haven't had a crossover with another team this season, in contrast to other ranger teams. The rangers use the spell code of their mystic morphers to morph 
into Mystic Titans. They withstand Draken's attacks during Shattered Grid, while Udana as the White Mystic Ranger responds to Zordon's summons. In Power Rangers Beast Morphers, the Mystic Force Rangers also made a brief cameo appearance. Among weapons and vehicles, they have a wide array of stuff to choose from. Be it the Mystic Lion Staff or Mystic Speeder, their arsenal of tools is top-notch. Whether by using the Mystic Sword or Laser Lamp, the Mystic Ranger's unmatchable skills will always have you covered. Dino Supercharge Power Rangers 23rd season, Dino Supercharge, adapts the Super Sentai series Zayuden Sentai Kaiuryogur. The Dino Charge Rangers disperse after defeating Sledge, but their mission is far from done. Snide and Heckle, two of Sledge's more deadly henchmen, are attempting to seize control of the Energems and use them to conquer the planet. Fit to face one of their strongest adversaries, the Rangers are armed with new weaponry, allies, Zords, and the T-Rex Supercharge form. As Dino Charge Rangers Rangers are so strong and possess such potent energems, they become eternal. With 11 members, including the highly skilled Xena Wing, also known as the Dino Charge Silver, and the villainous Dark Ranger Heckle, it's also essentially the squad with the most members. The Dino Charge Morphers are the main sidearms of the Rangers and are powered by the Dino Chargers. Tyler uses this to transform into a T-Rex Supercharged Red Ranger to fight his enemies. The Titano Charge Morpher is the most powerful variation of the Dino Charge Morpher and is used by the Dino Charge Silver Ranger. However, their most powerful weapon is the Dino Charge Ultrazord. This is a combination of the potent Titano Raptor Axe along with the Parazord, the Titanozord, Raptor Zord, and the Dino Charge Megazord. Apart from this, they also use a Dino Com, Dino Spike, and Dino Super Drive Saber as their weapons. Charged by the new T-Rex Supercharge mode, this group of rangers has immense power to defeat any bad boy. SPD Rangers. The A Squad, B Squad, and all other members of the team are collectively referred to as SPD Rangers, or the Space Patrol Delta Power Rangers. After reuniting with the legendary Rangers, these warriors supported the Mega Rangers in their last confrontation with the Armada, fighting through hundreds of Exborgs and countless bruisers, and then went back to their own timeline. The Command Center for Earth's SPD Academy and the SPD Power Rangers are the Space Patrol Delta Base Headquarters, or SPD. Delta Base. By folding its upper half, the base becomes the Delta Command Crawler, which allows it to move anywhere on the planet. SPD even has a large selection of Megazords. Among the biggest Megazords is the Delta Command Megazord. It has photon beams, finger lasers, and super crime scene tape dispensers. B-Squad can access the Megazord's cockpit by using the energy chutes on its fingers. Another ally of SPD, the SWAT Megazord, is equipped with two Magnum Blasters, foot rockets for flight and the ability to resist a full blast from Omni the Magnificence. Among other skills, the SPD can use Delta Blasters, Omega Morphers, and RIC 2.0 to take on their enemies. This group, commanded by Anubis Kruger, does excellent teamwork to battle any adversary, thus emerging as a strong Power Ranger team. Time Force Ranger. The Time Force Rangers are a team that includes Trip, Jen, Lucas, and Katie, Trip being from the year 3000. They gang up with Wes and Eric from 2001 to capture Rancic, who escaped in 2001 and seemingly killed Alex, the original Time Force Red Ranger. In the same year, they recruit Wes, Alex's ancestor, as the new Time Force Red Ranger and meet Eric, Wes's friend, who becomes the Quantum Ranger. A year later, the Mutt Orgs, a, a mix of mutant and org creatures, unleashed by Rancic were discovered by the Wild Force Rangers and Silver Guardians. The Time Force Rangers returned to help defeat these villains and became friends with the Wild Force team. Later, Wes and Eric joined past Red Rangers to fight the remnants of the Machine Empire. During this battle, Wes joked about the lack of a fan club for himself compared to Tommy Oliver, and Eric quipped that his Q-Rex Zord was far more effective than the Dragon Zord. The Time Force Rangers were featured in the Legacy of Power, a history book 
written by Tommy Oliver for the Dino Rangers. They also had major roles in Super Megaforce, in which they helped fight in the final battle against the Armada and joined the Legendary Ranger. Wes, having become an interdimensional guardian, helped the Ninja Steel Rangers rescue kidnapped rangers. At the end of the fight, Wes left with his team but left behind a transportal device as a present. Pink Ranger Jen Scotts had become a professor at the Time Force Academy and led new recruits in a chase after a mysterious figure appeared back in 1994. During the events of Shattered Grid, the Time Force Rangers were separated into their own pocket universe but were later restored along with the timeline. The Time Force Rangers are versatile in technology, leadership, and fighting. They could also fight well using Zords and Chronomorphers. Another tool available to them was the Time Badge, which could freeze monsters. Wes, Jen's partner and the Red Time Force Ranger, received the Time Force Badge. Each Ranger carries a Vortex Blaster, firing energy bolts colored accordingly to the respective Ranger. RPM. Let's take a look at the RPM Power Rangers. It's the 17th season of the franchise, based on the 32nd Super Sentai series, Engine Sentai Goanger. It shares similar plot points with Power Rangers Beast Morphers, its successor. In the darkest of futures, the Vengex computer network plots the subjugation and destruction of Earth. Panicked, humanity retreats to Earth's cities with insulated domes to protect itself from Vengex's machinery and pollution. In Corinth, elite rangers deal with Vengex's army by piloting cutting-edge biotech vehicles. The series is set in an alternate timeline. The Morphin Grid here is known as the Biofield. There are also numerous, more subtle references to previous series, such as the Jungle Karma Pizza or the Operation Overdrive headgear. The group is constantly coming up with new strategies to deploy against Vengex, both to protect the city and permanently eliminate the virus. All the weapons and technology have been designed by Dr. K. What's perhaps most amazing is that Vengex is just as flexible in producing attack bots and servants to match any power the RPM team is able to accomplish. RPM firmly holds a position in the top ranks of teams and struggle for dominance fighting against the increasing odds. They ultimately emerge victorious, demonstrating the strength of a properly coordinated team combined with individual creativity. The main weapons they use include Nitro Blaster, Cloud Hatchets, Turbo Cannon, and a variety of Zords like the RPM Ultra Zord or the Zenith Megazord. Mighty Morphin. Let's talk about the OG of this superhero franchise. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is the first season released in 1993 and is adapted from Kaioria Sentai Juranger. It all begins when Zordon recruits a team of teenagers to confront the resurgence of Rita Repulsa and her goons. Though the show mainly targeted a young audience, it actually became a 90s pop culture phenomenon. When future co-creator Haim Saban first saw the 8th Super Sentai series, Chodenshi Bioman, in 1986, the first version of Power Rangers appeared. Recognizing Bioman's potential, Saban bought the rights to adapt the character, but TV networks kept turning down his pilot since dubbed adaptations had never worked before. The program was approved by Fox Kids producer Margaret Luch in 1992, and Saban used a video from Kyuria Sintai Juranger. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers television series had new characters but kept the names from the abandoned Bioman pilot. The show succeeded despite having a small budget and a few adjustments and Toei continued to release more original footage to support its popularity. Zordon defeated Rita Repulsa a long time ago and used five power coins to seal her on the moon. Rita breaks free and seeks conquest of Earth later. Teenagers Jason, Trini, Kimberly, Zack, and Billy are enlisted by Zordon to become Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. As they battle Rita's armies, they gain strength from the power coins. Rita causes chaos by turning newcomer Tommy into her Green Ranger. After a lot of problems, Tommy becomes part of the the Power Rangers team, though tries to cancel his powers. Tommy gives Jason his last few powers so that he can stop Rita. While Zordon infuses ancient power into Tommy's power coin and the Rangers are still foiling Rita's schemes, greater threats are at hand. You guessed it right, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 2 picks up from here. No brownie points for guessing where these original Power Rangers derived their powers from? Of course, it was the power coins. The power coins are historical artifacts filled with a lot of potential. 
world. They work as keys for tapping into the Morphin Grid, a cosmic force that gives the Rangers their strength and enables them to transform. Thanks to these legendary coins, the Rangers have unmatched might, speed, and fighting skills. They also possess special power weapons and morphers for morphing into their Ranger versions and tools for communication and teleportation. They're able to call forth and command enormous robotic Zords through the Zord connection, resulting in the creation of the formidable Megazord. They defeat wicked enemies by using weapons like the Mighty Power Blaster, Sword of Power, Mirror Shield, or the Ribbon Weapon. Of all these weapons, the Power Cannon is arguably the strongest one. A large black and gold bazooka with a Chinese dragon head on top, the Power Cannon shoots powerful energy balls. It has to be operated by three Rangers minimum. I bet we all grew up screaming, it's Morphin time, and even today the excitement is as good as new. The show, with its timeless magic and a team of vibrant superheroes, has left a permanent mark on fans, and we can only hope for its fame to grow. Marvelous Verdict. Okay guys, we've reached the end of the video. Honestly, to rank any Power Ranger team as superior than another would be unfair. All of them are unique and powerful in their own ways, and have been protecting the Earth for decades. In my opinion, each team has their distinct qualities, skills, and members carefully curated to suit the ever-growing need for the safety of the human population. Every team has done their part in carrying on the legacy of this franchise for years, and I'm pretty sure they'll continue to do so. Let us know which one is your favorite Power Rangers team in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao! And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.